vehicle storage lot in an undisclosed location. Here's another episode of the traditional Roman Catholic. In one of those rare instances when we actually get feedback at uh, the Catholic Cyber Militiamen, uh, a lady named, uh, whose online moniker is NAP Wonder Woman, wrote asking, surely there must be something we can do. And this was in response to the video we did about why they aren't excommunicating the governor of New York for that, uh, that, that wretched uh, abortion law. Well, there are things that we can do, and these are things that you're familiar with you may not uh, you may not think they're effective, maybe even corny, but if enough concerned Catholics participate, if they do that, if they pester the diocesan offices, there's going to be an effect. You can call. You can call on the phone. May I speak to His Excellency, please? Well, probably not, but you're going to get some secretary or some stooge in the office who's going to have to take the call. They're going to have to listen to the voicemail. And they're going to get the idea that the parishioners out there are not pleased. You can email. Again, these, these dioceses, they all have their websites. They have their contact forms. Are those emails going to land on the screen of His Excellency? Yeah, maybe not. But somebody's going to have to look at them, even if they're just tagging them and deleting them. And they're going to get the idea that, you know, they're kind of getting annoyed with us out there. So... But here's, a, here's something that is so old school that um, you may not have considered it. And this has worked for, uh, for me to a certain extent with, uh, with my local bishop, who is no prize, believe me. You go old school and you write them a letter. I mean, and, and for uh, you millennials out there, a letter was like a text or an email, except it involved paper and somebody actually physically opening it, unfolding it, and reading it. So it, it's, it's quaint, it's charming, it's certainly from the last century, but it works. And you know why it works? When a bishop gets an envelope in the mail, he's not going to ignore it. And you know why? He's looking for a check. He will not, you may tag and delete an email, but you can bet your bottom dollar that if he gets something like this, especially if it's during the diocesan appeal, the shakedown, they're going to open that sucker because they want to see that check fall out. And imagine their surprise and disappointment if instead of a check, there's a letter from you asking them to show a little backbone, asking them to uphold the authentic magisterial teachings of the church, return to orthodoxy, nail the people in under their, uh, their their diocesan control that are departing from the the time-honored teachings of the Catholic Church. And yeah, that'll have an effect. They'll be forced to open it. So I, I, I think pestering is a good phrase. I pestered my local bishop with uh, letter after letter, and, and he would actually write back. I mean, sometimes it was absolutely a form letter, you know, talking about the abuse crisis. You could tell it was, okay, type up form number six and I'll sign it. But towards the end, I got one that was hand-scribbled from a very annoyed prelate. And uh, the fact that he actually scribbled this thing out and hand-addressed the envelope and sent it off back to me. Has he become another Fulton Sheen afterwards? Wow, hey, this, this Hank Idgeter guy, he's right, he's right, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong, I'm, I'm going to be orthodox. Yeah, no, but at least they know that they are not universally beloved of their people. And that is a big thing. For a lot of prelates, they want the approval, they want the praise. So, and again, you just fill it out there. You can find the address. Don't use this. This is a stunt envelope, so don't use that address. But these things, they have an effect. Another envelope that has an effect are these little ones, the kind that get dropped in the collection plate every Sunday. Assuming you are going to church every Sunday, which of course you should be, because it's kind of like one of the Ten Commandment things. If you've got a a parish that's kind of, yeah, you know, maybe you, you reduce the number in that, uh, the, the amount of money in that envelope, and you send it someplace else. Now, the idea is you don't cut off the flow of money because the Lord's work needs to go on, but don't send good money after bad. So 
Uh, find a, if, if your church is a good one, support them. Absolutely support them. If you want to support the Lord's work, but you're not so sure about your bishop, not so sure about your local parish, there's good charities out there. You've got to be careful, but you can find uh, some that are, uh, you know, real missionaries, some that are of a traditionalist bent, some uh, seminaries out there that are really good. So consider doing that. The fourth thing you can do, this one doesn't involve uh, money, but it's, it's blogging. So you're, you're on this website, you're looking here, leave comments. And, and of course, you know, here we're kind of like a self-looking ice cream cone. We get a lot of traditionalists, a lot. Well, we, we've got, you know, what, 24, 30 people. So yeah, we're just, we're up there. But some of the bigger sites like Church Militant or LifeSite News, they create a lot of churn. And those organizations do catch the attention of the folks in the diocesan offices. They, uh, they, they check in there. And if they see that the, uh, the, uh, the good, uh, the good uh, people of um, the Catholic Church are upset, that's going to have an effect. And also, take the fight to the heterodox. Uh, the Jesuits, America Magazine, they have articles online, and boy, are they doozies. Uh, and you don't need to you don't need to um, to uh, to read Russian, you know. Even though they have sort of a Soviet uh, flavor, sometimes they actually are in English, which is good. But you can leave comments there, and don't be nasty, don't be snarky. But hey, I respectfully disagree according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Yada yada yada. So, place like that or the heterodox uh, publications out there like uh, Common Wheel, and that's really their name. I know a lot of times you hear it called Commie Squeal, but it's it's Common Wheel, or um, the National Catholic Reporter, get on those sites. Take the fight to them. Again, you're going to be disturbing their little self-licking ice cream cone world of aren't we wonderful and aren't we just pressing forward in the wonderful spirit of Vatican II to make the church completely unrecognizable? Aren't we swell? Every once in a while you get an email comment from somebody out there, not necessarily a tratty, but just a regular Joe Catholic kind of guy that is concerned. You know, why are you doing this? Why is Father James Martin saying all this stuff? That's not in the catechism, is it? And why are you supporting him? So, yeah, get out there and do that. And uh, the last thing that uh, NAP Wonder Woman said in her um, in her uh, to note to the uh, Catholic Cyber Militia .com, she said, I am praying without ceasing and trusting in Jesus' promise that the gates of hell will not prevail against his holy church. And that's the real key. We've got to keep praying. So, Get a little activist, you know, go a little rogue, create a little bit of churn, and uh, stand up. Stand up for our Savior. Stand up for your faith. Because if you don't, it's going to disappear from North America. See ya.